Ain't this what they been waiting for? You ready? Uh, uh I used to pray for times like this To rhyme like this So I had to grind like that To shine like this In a matter of time I spent On some locked up shit In the back of the paddy wagon Cuffs locked on wrist What's up everybody? How we doing? Verbs! Okay, uh, welcome. This is put verbs in your database. Uh, we're gonna put some verbs in a database. Uh, I'm Daniel Colburn, I'm a software developer. Uh, I do random stuff around the Laravel community. You may have encountered me doing one of those things, or you may have never encountered me. Uh, I live in a place that looks like this. It's called Asheville, North Carolina. It's beautiful. If you zoom out a little bit, it looks like that. <laughs> and it costs that. <laughs> uh, this is my good buddy, John Drexler. So John and I went to college together. Uh, we've been friends for a long time. We've worked on a lot of projects together. And uh, John is a really great product manager. Well, during COVID, we decided to build a fully event-sourced, Laravel-based <laughs> web game as a way to hang out. Uh, eventually, during that process, John became a pretty good programmer. Uh, I taught him to code. Everyone says they always want to clone themselves. I did it. He has all my same opinions. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so together, we founded a small software consulting company called Thunk. We have like a handful of clients at a time we work with, um, and we do product consulting, which is John's bag, and dev consulting, which is mine. Turns out a lot of people who think they have dev problems actually have product problems. A lot of people who think they have product problems actually have dev problems. So it works well. Uh, John and I also have a podcast together called Talking Businessly. Uh, it's just we had a weekly call called Talking Businessly where we talked about the business and we decided to start recording it. So it's very good. I like it. Um, we talk about whether we have money or not. Um, <laughs> I also have another podcast called No Plans to Merge. Uh, has anyone heard No Plans to Merge in here? <laughs> All right, like seven or 70, I don't know. People have heard No Plans to Merge. I do that with another good buddy of mine, Caleb Porzio, who you've never heard of. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've been told that is a fishing podcast disguised as a programming podcast. But we are not here to talk about any of those projects. We're here to talk about this project, which is a new project. Verbs, that's my dog. <laughs> that's Max, very good boy. Everyone else had a dog in their slides, I just felt like I had to do it, you know. All right, so picture this, right? You're at work, it's a normal day. You haven't even gotten on Twitter yet. <laughs> when you get an email, you get an email from Harry in HR. We like Harry in HR. Harry is chill, he always has very reasonable requests that are very easy to fulfill. Today should be no different. Uh, so Harry says, we want to start handling job applications internally. We want to intake new applications and approve or deny them. Harry, you got me on a good day. This is easy. I'm going to make a job applications table. I'm going to make a model that goes with that job applications table. And I'm going to put a status column that is a string, not an enum, on, <laughs> on that table. Who here has a status column on one of their database tables? There we go. There we go. You see this? All right, um, everyone has a status column on one of their database tables. So we do it, there's nothing wrong with it. Oh no, Harry, 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 Harry. The current job applications page is really confusing. Can we sort by approval status and date? I want newest to oldest pending applications followed by newest to oldest approved applications. All right, this, honestly, Harry, this is not your fault. This is my fault. I should have seen this coming. I've been around long enough to know that you never make a status column. You always make three timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. I've got an apply that. I've got approved that. I've got denied that, right? And now I know when everyone did everything. Surely this table will never change. <laughs> Oh, right, 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 and I forgot. Uh, in the meantime, 100 job applications came in and they all have statuses, so I can't even run that migration because I'll be dropping all of the data, right? So I need to split that up into two migrations. Uh, first, I need to add my columns. Then I need to run a data migration that looks something like this, that loops through all of the records and creates the timestamps based on the updated at. 
It's gonna be a nightmare. I'm starting to like Harry less, honestly. <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> Take a little break. Maybe I'll finally get to get on Twitter today. <sighs> oh, <fuck. sighs> we want to be able to set a date for a scheduled interview on a job application. I guess I could have seen that coming. After they apply, they have to interview. Um, it would also be great to have notes so we can take interview notes. Thanks, Harry. This one's not that bad, right? The other ones, maybe. But this one, we just had a timestamp. One more. Four timestamps. Not, not that big of a deal. <laughs> also, these, that's two timestamps hidden in the timestamps one, so we're up to six, I think. Uh, and then we had a string for some notes. No problem. No big deal. Oh, but we're adding a second round of interviews. Go ahead. So we had a second round of interviews. So now my two beautiful columns have to go away, and I'm going to have to make a whole new table for interviews that are going to have a relationship to applications. So get rid of some timestamps. We add an interviews table. It's got its own notes, and it's got an interviewer ID, which is a relationship to a user. This, this feels like things we've done, right? You've done this? All right. OK. Uh, and then obviously, when we create the application, we also need to schedule two interviews. So now we've got a model event listener on created. So we're going to create an interview with some random person from engineering, and we're going to create an interview with some random person from HR. It's fine. Uh, I started to write the data migration, but it sucked too much, so I just stopped. <laughs> but like, picture that you had to write it, right? Doesn't it suck? <laughs> I didn't even want to do it for the talk. <laughs> Ah, oh. we're back. It's Harry. This better be the last, last email. When an interview is scheduled, can you please send me an email notification? I've slept through three interviews this week. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. I'm familiar with this problem. All right, so in addition to our existing model event observers, we're going to add one more on the interview model so that when an interview is created, we're going to send a notification to the interviewer. And finally, we have arrived at Feels Bad. <laughs> this is, I believe, if I'm counting right, six timestamps, two models, uh, both of which have uh, observers on them. And uh, one of the observers triggers the creation of the other, other model, which triggers the other observer, which triggers the sending of the email. This I hate. But why does it feel bad? Nouns. <laughs> we care about what happened, right? Harry in HR, all he cares about is when did they apply? When were they approved? When is their interview scheduled, right? He doesn't care that the status column went from applied to approved. He doesn't care that the scheduled at timestamp was set to now, right? Those, we as object oriented, noun-shaped database table developers translated his emails, which were full of verbs, into modifying nouns. We needed to know what happened, but our database only knows what resulted from what happened. What will we care about in a year? Are we going to care about the scheduled at time, or are we going to care that it got scheduled? Let's talk about event sourcing. It, who here has ever done any event sourcing? All right, some of you. Event sourcing is this thing that's a little mysterious to a lot of people. It's got a lot of definitions. Martin Fowler, I think, has like four. Um, there's a lot of definitions of event sourcing. I'm going to give you mine. Storing verbs in our database so that we can use the past to know the present. Right? So what does this look like? Looks like this. <laughs> This is, a, this is a table. I pulled this table out of a real database uh, that I wrote for this talk. Um, it, so we've got a big old ID. That's a snowflake. We'll talk about those later. Uh, <laughs> then we've got a, a class. And we've got a big, ugly JSON field full of data. Why would I want this in my application, Daniel? You ask. But why? There's a couple reasons. Fearless refactors. Uh, so the way event sourcing works, right? We, uh, we take a bunch of data and we 
store it in the form of events, right? And when those events happen, we can project that data into other shapes. So we can put it into other fields in, or other tables in our database. When you're refactoring a feature, if you're getting in there and doing some code refactoring, at some point you may realize, oh, it would be better if my database was shaped differently than it's currently shaped. But sadly, I've got all this data in my database, <laughs> and so I can't just change the shape of everything willy-nilly. With event sourcing, that becomes much, much more feasible. I still wouldn't do it like every day, but it becomes much more feasible to drastically alter the shape of your database uh, because you've got your events that have all of the data about what happened, and you can project them into whatever shape you want. Simple queries. Uh, speaking of whatever shape you want, you project them into whatever shape is easiest to query. Um, so I, in my event source apps, I never write where has, ever, right? If I care about a piece of data that was like only available through like three nested levels of relationship, I just put it on the original table. Because I don't care, because my database tables are disposable. Time travel. <laughs> Big promise. Um, if something goes wrong, right, you had a validation problem, you had a security hole, people did things that weren't supposed to happen, and now everything's messed up. If you can identify what happened, you can make as though it never happened, right? You can go, go back, delete the thing, truncate all your tables, <laughs> reproject, and we're back in business. This is the theory. <laughs> I've done it in practice, it's doable, it's not as easy as I'm making it sound. <laughs> So I used to work at this place called InterNACHI. Uh, my boss was this guy named Chris Morrell. You guys might have seen him hanging out on Twitter. Uh, he maintains a bunch of really cool things in addition to running a business. Um, one of the cool things he maintains is modular, which I think is like the best way to organize a Laravel application, but it's like a separate talk that I can't get into right now. Uh, but you should I'm just go install it. Um, while we were there, we built, we built this exam system which uh, a bunch of like, state and national governments relied on whether to give people licenses to build buildings based on whether you know, the answers were right at the right time and all this stuff. So it mattered. Um, and so we looked into event sourcing and we actually built this whole thing, event source top to bottom. And in doing that, we started to form opinions. <laughs> uh, and we started to feel like this process is not very ergonomic. It doesn't feel very good. Uh, Every feature, we started to need to open four or five separate files. Um, you know, it was very Nanda. Um, and so we decided we wanted to make our own event sourcing package four years ago. <laughs> so verbs eventually <laughs> became what we're calling event sourcing for people who absolutely insist that things feel nice. Um, let's look at a little code. So, we are back, we're over here, and we've got VS Code. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. I've written three tests. We're gonna TDD some live coding here. Um, so, we had three sets of requirements that Harry gave us, three sets of emails interspersed by jokes and smokos. Um, and so, I'm gonna go through a regular uh, event sourced implementation of those things, and then uh, I'm going to refactor as we would have had to do. So uh, it can create an application with a submitted status. So let's run past. Okay, uh, no query results for model application. So what are we doing? We're, set, we're expecting there are no applications, then we're going to fire something called application submitted. I don't know what that is. Then we're going to call verbs commit. I don't know what that is. And then <laughs> we're going to expect that there is a soul. You guys like soul? I like soul. There's a soul application and its status is submitted. All right, so what we're seeing here is that there are no query results for this. It means there is no application being created. So application submitted is a verbs event. So let's go take a look at it. Ignore this code, we're about to refactor it out. I just had to do it so I didn't have to explain a hard concept first. Um, all right, we've got a handle method here. Inside of it, we're gonna say application create you guys, you guys like this? ID is going to be th this application ID, and uh, status is going to be, what did we say it was? Submitted, GitHub Copilot new. I doubted it. 
Um, all right, so we're going to do that. We're going to rerun test. Hey, we've got a passing test. We love a passing test. So what happened here? Uh, I fired an event, and that event had a handle method. Handle method is just an event listener. You can register other event listeners for this event other places in your app, but we find that most events have a primary reason they're being fired. And if that's true for your event, why not just put it right here on the event? If you want to move it somewhere else later, because you've got five things that are happening, go for it. Um, all right, next test. Uh, we can approve an application setting approved status. We can do that. So what are we doing here? We're doing the exact same application submitted fire. We're getting the application ID. Then we're firing an application approved. Then we're calling verbs commit. By the way, now's a good time to talk about verbs commit. This is something you're never going to have to do in a real application. Uh, when your application gets torn down, when your request ends, when your console command tears down the application, we call verbs commit automatically. Because I'm in a test and I want to test what happens after verbs commit, I'm calling it in my test. But you will never have to write this code. <laughs> Um, all right, so we've got, we're, we're firing application approved, then we're committing, then we're expecting there still to be only one application and its status to be approved. Uh, I'm guessing we've got an application approved uh, event and it has no method, so let's find application, let's say find or fail this application ID. Then we're going to say update. Did I wake someone up? Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to say status approved. Get out of here, approved dad. Who are you? Um, <laughs> all right, and then we're going to import application. We want the model. And we're going to rerun pest. And we've got two passing tests. All right, let's go. We're going to do exactly the same thing for rejected, right? We've got another event called uh, application rejected. Let's go back to application approved and just straight up copy it, huh? Um, oh, you want to see a failing test? My bad. Here, here, here. Failing test. <laughs> it's real, I promise. <laughs> All right, and we want our status on application rejected to go to rejected. Bing bong, passed three passing tests. We did it. Okay, so. These are Harry's initial requirements, right? The status column. Fortunately, he wised up and made us do timestamps next. So we're going to comment all that out because it's about to break anyway. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to our second failing test or our second requirement test. So again, we've got everything commented out. I'll comment it all back in. I'll pest. We've got four failing tests. So let's go to the first one. Uh, so we're going to expect there to be no applications. We're going to fire application submitted, and we're going to expect there to be an application, and for approved that to be null, and for rejected that to be null. So probably we need to go to our applications table migration, right? And there we go. There's, these are commented out, so let's just comment them back in. Um, and we'll go to our application uh, submitted, and we're setting status to approved, but really we want to be setting approved at to now. And in so doing, uh, right, we don't want to do that on submitted. I'm sorry, we would want to do that on approved, which this is not. <laughs> there we go. We've got, a, we've got a passing test. We go back to our second requirements test. We've got a second test. Let's uncomment it. Let's watch it fail. OK, what do we got here? Uh, there is, what are we mad about? No such column status. Oh, right, and that's because our application approved is still trying to update the status column, which doesn't exist. So we're going to set approved at to now, and Bob is your uncle. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to do the same thing with rejected at, quite simply. All right, uh, there is no such column status because that. All right, we've got our three passing tests. Now we're gonna we're gonna improve on our design a little bit, right? Uh, we had no like state machine logic or anything, 
before, preventing us from going from a rejected test and then like re-rejecting it or something, right? Let's assume that Harry knew that that was gonna be a problem and asked us to do it, or that we just decided to do it because we're smart. Um, so we're gonna test that you can't approve an application which is already approved or rejected. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so if I run this test, what do we see? Uh, test, hello. There we go. Um, we see exception not thrown. So we're expecting to be throwing an exception. So let's go take a look at a, some more features of a verbs event. So in this, we can create a method called validate. And this method is going to tell us whether or not this event is allowed to be thrown. Um, in addition, we're going to make a method called apply. And this method is going to apply our event to some state object somewhere that exists in the ether. Uh, state objects are really cool. They're, uh, I'm not gonna give you the banking example of event sourcing, because you've probably heard it, but they're really good for things like updating bank accounts. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so what we're gonna do right here is just make a state. So we're gonna say art verbs state application state. All right, so we've made an application state. Oh, art is short for artist. It's short for PHP artisan. Um, I'm not uh, like a stoic or uh, a Buddhist, so I put Lil Wayne lyrics in my <laughs> generated things. This is, a, this is for Steven, picking the lock. All right, so in our application state, what does it have? It has a public carbon, eliminate support, the only good carbon. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna say approved at, and then we're gonna say public carbon rejected at, and we're gonna set both of them to be null. All right, back in our, uh, we've got an unexpected token, live on stage. Thank you. I knew I was gonna do that, exact error. Um, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell verbs that this ID right here is how we're going to look up our state, right? So I'm going to basically just use a little attribute, state ID, application state. I'm gonna import application state. So what I'm telling verbs is that this ID is the ID of a state uh, and that you have two parentheses uh, and that you care about this ID and you should use it to hydrate a state. Then we're going to apply to an application state, and we're going to validate against an application state, and we're going to say here that state, what is this, approved? Yeah, state approved at is now, great. And then we're gonna say if state approved at, throw application already approved. Come on, give me the rejected. Let's go, application already rejected. <laughs> Uh, and that's not the error message, come on now. Uh, so we wanna say, cannot approve an approved application, and then we wanna say, cannot approve a rejected application. Uh, exception, exception, not thrown. A rejected. <laughs> That's not it. Uh, <laughs> uh, ta -ta 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 All right, if I comment these out, do I just get an exception? Let's see, this is live coding. Let's go, baby. Um, exception, exception, not thrown. Could not approve. Why is it asking for an exception? These are commented out. Okay, great. So we're firing application approved. We're applying to application state. We're checking state approved at. I do need to save it, thank you. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> the real hero. <laughs> we would have been here all night. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna uncomment this one. 
Uh, we're not passing anymore. Um, cannot approve a rejected application. I bet it's a spelling thing, huh? Cannot approve. Cannot approve a rejected Okay, now what? <laughs> All right, we could fix this, but we're not going to, right? Because <laughs> we just don't have time. So we're going to delete this expectation, because if the test doesn't pass, just delete it, you know? <laughs> All right, um, we're going to do, we're going to take the exact same thing from here. We're going to copy it over to our application, rejected. This is TDD, y'all. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to apply to our application state. We're going to set rejected at. We're going to set if. Uh, uh, cannot reject an approved application. Cannot reject an approved application. Great. We love it. I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. You try live coding. Uh, <laughs> OK. Our third test is coming. So this is our uh, sending emails, right? So that was, that was the, the thing we needed to do. So on application submitted, right, we wanted to schedule, e schedule interviews and send emails, right? So here we're just going to fire an interview scheduled, and we want the event, not the notification. Fire. Then we're going to say, Ooh, hey, you had it. Uh, sure, we'll say one. <laughs> uh, I think we have a user query HR random or uh, in random order, I guess. First ID, something like that. Um, and then I think we said one day for HR and two days for engineering in our test. We're about to go look. Um, semicolon, semicolon. Uh, and this is going to be engineers, and we're going to set this to two days. All right, let's go look. So in our second requirements test, we're going to comment all of it out because it's about to break anyway. It was already broken, honestly. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we're going to come back in here, and we're going to uncomment our third requirements test. So what are our requirements? We're going to fake notifications, carbon set test now. Uh, we're going to say it creates an application and schedules two interviews. So we're going to submit our application. We're going to verbs commit. And then we're going to assert that there's an interview with this stuff. And then we're going to assert that there's also an interview with this stuff. It's going to fail. But uh, so it's going to fail in lots of ways. Um, Not sure what's going on here. It's the, it's the snapshot store, guys. Um, so, in our interview scheduled event, I just want to see if we're even getting here. You guys do this ever? Did you hear? <laughs> All right, we're not even getting here. So, something in our test, this worked so well yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, Rissa. <laughs> Was I meant to delete the ID on application? Oh, yes, I was. This thing I didn't want to explain because it was a hack. Uh, we're going to basically say that we have a public application ID. And we're going to remember how we defined an application ID as uh, identifying a state. We're going to do the exact same thing here. So we're going to say state ID, application, state, class. We're not testing anything anymore. What? All right. I don't think I, in the next 55 seconds, I'm going to debug this. Um, all right. Well, let me at least talk you through what would have happened if I was not as nervous. So our goal here is that we're going to fire another event from inside of our event handler. Uh, that is a concern most of the time in event sourcing, because uh, if you replay those events, you don't want to create duplicate copies of the events that you already have, right? Um, and so what Verbs does is it, when you fire an event in, in replay mode, that's just a no-off. Nothing happens, right? Uh, if you super want to fire that event again, 
for some reason that we couldn't come up with, we tried, uh, <laughs> then there, is, there are helper methods that let you say, like, yes, I'm an adult, I want to do this, uh, <laughs> let me do it. Um, and so uh, there's also one other thing which I'll show you that we would have written in here, which is that uh, we have a verbs unless replaying, which uh, if you're doing something besides firing an event that you don't want to happen multiple times, you can just throw a closure in here and do whatever you want. So inside here, we were going to say, uh, well, that's not what we were going to do. We were going to notify the user right there, right? Because when we replay those events, we don't want to resend the notifications we were doing once. So that's a really good place for any payment logic you might have, any emails you might be sending, any third-party API requests you might be making, uh, any of that. Um, firing events basically takes care of itself uh, in the replaying context, and that is it. Uh, I wish I had uh, not flubbed the live coding, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, thank you all for being here, and uh, I'll be around if you want to talk event sourcing later, and I'll show it to you if you want. <laughs> we can debug it together. <laughs>